Hallelujah. So let's break it down. I'm sure we've all noticed that we have Pastor Molly over here dancing for the Lord. So we just love to see just two seconds. Pastor Molly. Basically, now for just two minutes to second. Let's give a shout for Pastor Molly. Pastor Molly. So, oh, Pastor Molly, Uti, let's break it down. Oh, Pastor Molly, Uti, she's shy, who's okay, Pampi. So, let's just turn this direction and watch her dance. Hallelujah. She can dance from where she is. Hallelujah. No, Pastor Molly. Pastor Molly. Pastor Molly. Pastor Molly. Give the Lord a shout. So before we start the song, I want to invite the Mike Mikey one. So I want to invite Rabbi over here to help us sing this song. So, 
Hallelujah. We're going to break it down one more time. Hallelujah. So, all the father figures and the role models that we have go front row. Featuring Kulegan as well. Pastor Mapong over here. The minister chefs as well. The pastor card. So some
say it's nice to be here. You say Jakana Kakuapano. It's nice to be here. Jakana Kakuapano. It's nice to be here. Hallelujah. Wow. Let's give a round of applause to the Lord. Hallelujah. Greet your neighbor once again and thank them for coming to church. You did well by coming into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So wonderful to see you all. <laughs> How wonderful. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read for you one more scripture. Ezekiel 2 verse 2. It says, and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. Amen. The word of God says, and the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. Hallelujah. Amen. We are about to hear the spirit of God speaking to us. And when he speaks, he will enter us and there shall be deliverance and there shall be healings and there shall be the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we have in our midst a great man of God, whom God uses greatly, through whom God speaks. We have a father. This is not the only church that he oversees. Over 800 churches, more than a thousand leaders. And we are privileged, we are honored to have a great man of God, our father, our bishop, our man of God, our prophet speaking um, to us. Thank you, Bishop. Welcome, Bishop. Okay. Yes. Psalm 89, it is our scripture today. We're picking it up from verse 20 to 29. You better personalize this. I believe the anointing is here today. Say amen. Psalm 89. Let's read it together. One, two, and three. Found my seven days. With my holy oil, I have anointed it. If you have a head today, if you didn't forget it at home, touch that head. Say, Lord Jesus, anoint me in a special way, in a unique way. Deliver me from all forms of oppressions in my life i declare sickness disease weaknesses failures are eliminated by the reason of the anointing i thank you that the spirit of fear is eliminated because of the anointing in the name of jesus yeah now that you are anointed let's Find out what the following scriptures say about the anointing upon your life. Verse 21. With whom, let's read it together. One, two, and three. With whom my hand shall be strong. Mm -hmm. Also my arm shall strengthen him. When you are anointed, God strengthens you. Yeah, no choice. You are strong. While others, or why you may think you are weak, because of the anointing, you are strong. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, hey, I said I'm strong. Yes. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Strong. Yes. Strong. The Bible says, when I'm weak, then I am strong. Yes. Yeah, verse 3. Let's read it. 23. Let's read oh, 22. The enemy shall not outwit him. No, the son of wickedness afraid. Satan angega kupaisi sawe because of the anointing. Ushukulo kusalupaisi zagupela, but this time upaisi. 
you will see a wrong guy from afar and say, that's not my boyfriend, that one. Uh -huh. Look at the man next to you and say, Baba, I'm going to go to the house. Verse 23. Because of that anointing, I will, one, two, and three. So God promises to beat down your enemies before your face, not in private, while you're watching, and plague those who hate you. Please, I hope I won't zone. Mm. I hope I won't zone. I hope I won't zone. I just hope I won't zone. Hey, and God says, but my faithfulness, let's read it together. But and shall be with you. Yeah? And in my name, his own shall be exalted. That means you are a man, a woman of authority. Say amen. amen. Lift those hands up and say, authority is mine. Authority is mine. No demon. Authority. Say it again, no devil. No, devil. no, Lucifer. no Lucifer is going to torment my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Let's read verse 25. Also, one, two, and three. I will his hand over the sea and his right hand over the river. Push your neighbor and say, so We are talking of money. We are talking of friends. We are talking of resources. We are talking of influence. We are talking of acquaintances. We are talking of Good associate. We are talking of the grace over your life. Tell a pillar's board. What's on Jelaga channel? I'm so Jelaga channel. May God increase you, enlarge you, and expand you in the name of Jesus. Say Amen. Here is what the Bible says when you cry to Him. He shall, you are my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation. Verse 27. Also, I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Mm, say, I'm the firstborn. Say it again. Say, I'm the firstborn. Number nine, say, I'm the firstborn. Why popular is good and bad? to number nine, you can go number one. And My mercy, let's read 28. My, I will keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand firm with him. Watch verse 29. All those that have kids or aspire to have kids. His seed also I will make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of him. I want you to turn around, join hands with your neighbor, and say, I know you may not have kids, but let's pray for the kids that you may have. Let's pray for the children today. Some of you don't have kids as yet, but we trust that they will come. We trust that they will come the right way. The right way will be marriage first, and then the kids, and not the kids they first and then marriage. But I want you to pray for the kids, your kids or anybody's kids, that God preserves them. There are many temptations today more than there were yesterday. There is lots of drugs, there's lots of promiscuity, there's lots of temptations and lots of difficulties. And let's pray. Pray with your neighbor as we pray for the children. Father, here we are. We are committing the children before you. We commit them before you. We commend them into your hands. Pray that your grace will be strong. Your grace be mighty over their lives. So take them. Watch over them. Take them from evil men. Take them from evil women. God over them. In the name of Jesus. Be their rear guard. 
parents here or grandparents practice laying on of hands upon your children or grandchildren and speak life to that there are many people that will speak negatively to them without you being aware they will tell them you're shy they tell them you will not make it even at school well-meaning teachers teachers are very good people but well-meaning teachers if they're not taught well they will say words that will limit your children box them in but you and I can speak and prophesy. Prophecy does not mean that you are closing your eyes and speaking in King James language. No, you can simply lay your hand upon the child and say, as for you, you will succeed. You have no choice but to succeed. Just those words, as for you, say it with me. As for you, you will succeed. Say it again. As for you. You will succeed. You have no choice. You are the top and not at the bottom. You are the head and not the tail. Now I want you to join your hands again with your neighbor and find another one. That one is boring. Find another one. Yeah. Say, I am prophesying over you. Say to them, say, I'm prophesying. So don't look for Papa somewhere or some false prophet somewhere. The person next to you will prophesy simply using the gift of prophecy. Simple gift of prophecy. I want you to say this to your neighbor today. Say, as for you, you have no choice but to succeed. Every mountain, say it again, every mountain that is stood before you, disappears, dissipates now in the name of Jesus. I see level ground in your life. I see doors that have been shut for months and for years in your life, opening up now in the name of Jesus. Your visions and your dreams that have eluded you in this season say it again in this season they are manifesting in the name of jesus i see every difficulty in your life being removed by the reason of the anointing tomorrow by this time changes will be effected in your life in the name of Jesus the grace of God abound in your life say it again the grace of God increase it over your life in the name of Jesus you are unstoppable in this season no matter the condition of the economy that will not affect you you will excel you will run like Elijah and overtake those that have gone ahead of you 
I see you on top and never under. I see you being the head and not the tail. I see you enlarging, increasing to the left, to the right. One hand in the seas and another hand by the rivers. I see your borders being extended. Increase in your life. I am declaring this in your life. Say to them, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Now, you didn't need to look for a papa to prophesy for you and pay some money for prophecy. That's a show sure prophecy. Put it in your spirit. It must come to pass in your life. Say amen. Hey, we are worshiping now. Let's start with these two guys. Oh, 
Microphone is low here, please. Can I shake? Lift it up. Thank you. Lift those hands up today. Thank you. Gracious God, we thank you for your feelable, tangible presence in our midst. Thank you for touching our hearts, touching our lives, bringing about conviction, transformation. Thank you, Lord, that we yield to your Holy Spirit today. We yield to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Wake a wake in our lives to shape us, to mold us. We read in your word. You are the potter. We are the clay. A clay in your hands that you squeeze it, shape it, mold it the way you want until we are vessels that bring honor and glory to you. Thank you this morning for your presence that draws us near to you. Your presence that is sweeter than honey, even the honeycomb. We love your presence. We love to be around you and near you, to be with you wherever you are. And thank you, dear God, for that grace that's available in our midst today. Whether you're sitting down or standing up, please maintain that position. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you're far away from him, 
you don't know what will happen to you if you die today should your soul be required of you today my question is where will you spend your eternity if you stop breathing now where will you spend your eternity many people prepare for many things here in this life they prepare for retirement they prepare for old age they prepare for many other things but they never prepare for the life after death i pray today that you'll be a wise person you'll be one that will prepare for a life after this one because there's a longer life after this that you must prepare for and that preparation begins in jesus my friend by accepting him as your lord and personal savior opening your life to him asking him to forgive you of all your shortcomings your sins so that he comes into your life miraculously washes you by the same blood that was shed over 2000 years ago on the cross that blood is still effective today as you confess your sins that blood washes away all your sins don't leave this place without making right with Jesus it's very important for you don't say tomorrow next Sunday or next year all those are not given they are not taken for granted you may not leave until that moment that you think you would please while you have that opportunity today you must accept Christ I'm going to challenge you today whether you're sitting down or standing up to show me by lifting up your hand you say pastor I'm here I need to accept Jesus lift that hand up lift it high up I see that hand I see those hands there I see those hands there lift it up don't be shy high up I see that hand there now all those that lifted up your hands I want you to step forward please step forward I see that man that man I see a group of people here I want you to come right here come on church you can do better than that today you can do better than that we are waiting for you can you open that door here can, can you open that open that please somebody yeah, thank you thank you thank you keep on clapping keep on clapping we are still waiting for your friend your friend hasn't come here is he? somebody's coming here put your hands together for them hey we are waiting for you the altar is open for you don't go home without accepting Christ you must acknowledge him someone is coming right here thank you going to ask everybody to stand please I'm not, not yet done with this altar call I still need to scoop a few people here if you can stand stand please ask your neighbor this very question tend to the person next to you don't go far the person next to you that you don't know very well if you know each other please find somebody not too far maybe at the back find someone find someone you are not moving you guys row number one find someone that you are not familiar with you're all right choir so that's fine but find someone i'm waiting for you to find quickly somebody someone is coming here put your hands together for this individual. thank you find someone today someone is coming here thank you ask them this very important question say ma'am if you are to die today where will you spend your eternity if the answer is it different say I am going with you I am bringing you up front here ask them a question 
Someone is coming right here. Please put your hands together. We are waiting. We are waiting, 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 waiting. We are waiting, waiting, waiting. For you in particular. We can't close this part of the service without you because this is the beginning. This is highly foundational for all of us as Christians that you come to a point where you accept him as your Lord and personal savior. Yeah, put your hands together for this individual. Thank you. Wow. Listen to, I know you've given me Romans 10, but you come back to that. Go back to Luke chapter 15, please. Just one scripture that says, there is joy in heaven. Just one scripture. Luke 15, whoever is moving. Ah. Luke chapter 15. Bantwinkos. Thank you. Someone is coming right here. Thank you so much. All right. The scripture says there is joy in heaven over one sinner that tends to the Lord. There are more than one today here. I want you to put your hands together for that. Yay. Don't, don't worry about finding Luke. Remain with Romans 10 since you are stuck there. We are so excited, ladies and gentlemen, that you came forward today. And this is the beginning of a new life to you. What you are doing today, many of us did many years ago, some many months ago, some many weeks ago, is the beginning of a new life. When Christ comes into your life, he empowers you to be different. But you have to work with him closely. To maintain that difference as you walk with him he changes you day by day we read the scripture that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved that word saved means you'll be changed literally your life will change and a new beginning starts today in your life so I'm going to lead you in prayer today and you pray after me accept that you mean it because you want God to transform your life. I want you to pray with me. Thank you for this man who's coming right here today. Thank you. And some of you that may not have come here for some reason or the other, but you're under my voice now, you're hearing what I'm saying. Please, you can pray this prayer effectively because all of us are going to do that, including the choir today. Yeah. Let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus. I can't hear you. Pray like you are meaning it. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you acknowledging that I'm a sinner. Pray this prayer again. Say, I come before you acknowledging that I'm a sinner. I open my heart. Say it one more time. I open my heart as I invite you to come into my life. Please, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me now by your precious blood. I thank you for making me your child today. In the name of Jesus, I declare in the name of Jesus that I am free from all forms of bondages. I am free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. You have made a very crucial prayer. Listen to what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if any man, woman is in Christ, they are a new creation. The prayer you prayed made you to be in Christ. And therefore, what follows this scripture is literally yours. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, they are a new creation. And he goes on to say, the old has passed and the new has begun in your life. 
So whatever you did prior to this moment, it's gone. Forgiven. Whatever you did, that's wrong. Forgiven. This is the beginning of a new life. Say amen. amen. And for you to grow in God, here's a scripture concerning the Bible. You must find a Bible. Get a Bible somewhere so that you begin to read the Bible because the Bible encourages us to read. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If you want to grow in the things of God, read the Bible daily. You have to read the Bible daily so that you can grow. There's another scripture about prayer. Reading the Bible is one thing, but prayer is simple, merely talking to God. Like you talk to a friend, and this is what the scripture says, pray without ceasing. Continually you are talking to God. In the morning, talk to God. In the evening, talk to him. Talk to him like you are talking to a friend. He understands you. And finally, Hebrews 10, 25. Powerful scripture. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Meaning that coming to church is key. We want to see you here every Sunday so that we teach you the word so that you grow by, thereby. Say amen. amen. Thank you so much. Can I ask the leaders please to come and lay hands on these people? Okay, some of them are bound. I, I'm not prophesying here. I'm just smelling lots of beer here. That's fine because they came like that. So we are going to pray for them and, and pray that God delivers them from all other afflictions. Remain standing, please. Don't sit and uh, come, see Abigail, come and see, come and be here, right here in the center here. Thank you. We're going to pray for these beautiful people today. We're praying for all forms of bondages to be broken. There is oil here. I believe you have dipped your hand in oil, like all of us are going to. Is there is there oil here so that we can pray for you and you'll be set free in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Set these young people free today in the name of Jesus. After prayer, they are going this so side in Jesus' name. All forms of bondages are broken now in Jesus' name. All forms of bondages are broken now in Jesus' mighty name.
Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Is the scripture that I need, please, on the screen so that I can help this. All right. It's a beautiful couple that lost their son, daughter, daughter, this particular week. I understand the confusion that may come to you. That's why I put that scripture there. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. Many a times when you lose a loved one, the enemy opens a door for you to question many things or to question your neighbors or tradition sets in, especially in Africa, to believe that someone may be tormenting you and, and bewitching you and, and therefore you fight with everybody else. You fight with neighbors, you fight with... Yet really, the life of an individual is in the hands of God. Okay, there are many things that we don't understand here on the other side that God understands better. Okay, I, I know this is not easy for you, but don't get to the other extreme and begin to, to go the other side. Begin to look for things in the dark or begin to be told by relatives to look for all other things and, and touch this and that. It will sink you deeper. It will sink you deeper. Believe you me, healing comes speedily when you look and fix your eyes upon the God who is our helper. Yeah, he helps us. All of us here at different seasons have lost loved ones. Okay, but the comforting words are from God. There are many things that God knows that you and I don't know. You just leave it to him and, and God will heal you over time. It's okay to grieve, but don't grieve as if you don't know the Lord. The opportunity comes in and the enemy enters you and he destroys you. And don't listen to anybody that tells you go this or which hunt or this and that and that. That's not the way of God. Okay, I'm saying this because of the counsel that one of our pastors has given you. So I'm saying it, I'm not prophesying it, I'm saying with the knowledge of what he's said to me and that will help you and that will help you speak. You are a man, lead the family, okay, and say we'll serve God. We'll not go into, into tradition, we'll not go into anything else but to serve God. That way, speedily, God will heal you and you will have many, many chances to rejoice before him. It's not easy at this point in time. Join hands. I want to pray for you today. Lift up your hands towards this beautiful couple. Thank you. God of grace, you are a healing God. You heal us, you touch us, restore us, restore this couple. We know, Lord, that you, through your Holy Spirit, can touch where we cannot. Our words are inadequate, but not with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit touches deep and begins to heal and mend. Not only them, but Lord, the grandparents, touch them and heal them. The relatives and those that are close to them. I pray that the healing power of God will flow through their lives. I release that anointing to heal emotions, to heal deep down in the inner parts of their hearts and their lives and their emotions too that they may know it is well with you do it for them in the name of Jesus Amen and Amen Thank you yeah. Thank you Hallelujah Is everybody back now? We assume they are back here yeah? Okay, please help me with the pulpit. In fact, before you do that, let's pray for you if you are not well in body. Is there anybody who is not well in body? Lift up your hand. You are in pain? One. Is there anybody else? Two. Okay. Lift up your hand so that I can ask Christians around you.
to be around you and lay hands over you so that I pray for you. Is somebody sick here? Can one or two Christians go there? Is someone here not well? We end by I and mean, food is not coming. Lay hands. Is there anybody else? Is somebody behind you? All right, Sister Namzi, you can cross over there. Is there anybody who's not well? Come, we are up, Sister Chris. All right, Umel up, Baza Ubegi Zandalabo, Oceanala. Oceanaba, Kocho, Nogmacha, Legi. Amen. All right, three of you, one, two, three, four, lay hands. You are not well? Yeah. You are carrying an anointing, so lay hands on it. Anybody else? Somebody behind the leaders, please go. Anybody else? Church should be not one superstar doing things. All of us doing things. That's why I encourage you to step out so that somebody right there. Row number one, please. Somebody is there. Can you lay hands? Is there anybody here? There's a lady wearing a white dress. Chefs, there's a lady there. There are two of them, in fact, with a the gentleman there. There's a gentleman there. There's one there. Right. Now, I need all of you here, row one and two, to turn around. And is there still anybody without anyone next to them with the view of someone at the back there? Please, if you can go there. Put scripture there, uh, please. Uh, me, my computerized guys, uh, there are so many scriptures on healing, please. First Peter 2.24, you can put, or oh, put James 5.14. Put James 5.14 and, and let's move. Is your computer frozen today? James 5.14 says, Is there anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil. Those hands, they've been anointed with oil, I believe. All right. And he says the prayer, the prayer, it is the prayer of verse 15, of the righteous will then serve the sick make them whole now let me pray as they lay hands over you father we command sickness and disease and infirmity and weakness to leave these bodies these bodies are the temples of the holy ghost infirmity you live now in the name of jesus you have no authority over these bodies any pain in the body lives in jesus mighty name by his stripes you were healed and receive that healing today in jesus name say amen thank you so much you can take your seats today thank you hallelujah i want to give you announcements today quickly We had an outreach yesterday in, in Jube. I know many people here should be coming from, from that. That was the second week of our outreach. Okay, if whether they have come back here, I would need to welcome them in a special way and welcome all of you. Let's start with all of you that are regulars. Regulars, you are welcome to church today. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Ah, uh, that's a week, week of offering. Yeah. Very weak one. Yeah, indeed. And then those that are here for the very first time. You've not been here in this church. This is called Harvest House International Church. We have many churches. We have over 800 churches globally. This church is an indigenous church started right here in Zimbabwe in our home some 28 years ago so it's all over now and we are filled in the city here with different meetings in our different uh, uh, locations here we can't be housed as of yet temporarily in one place even if we could we don't want to be in one place we grow that way being in many many places say amen all right so if this is your first time, please show me by lifting up your hand. I know I'm doing it prematurely here. Others are still coming. If this is your first time, lift up your hand. I want you to stand up, please. I see you, your hands are lifted up. Even if you didn't lift up your hand, but this is your first time, stand. 
those that are there were captured, I'm sure, Nanji, you have given them filling form, so that's fine. Yeah. Once you've received a filling form, please, or a brochure, pluck out a filling form. There is a filling form in there. Just pull it out and then ask for a pen from someone and then fill it in. Please take your seats once you've received those. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Please fill it in. Take this, but this leave behind. Right, all visitors to go to the visitor's lounge after this service. You go back to where you were if you're a visitor. They just want to talk to you and maybe share a cup of tea with you or drink uh, with you. So don't be in a hurry to leave. Tuesday prayer, we are here on Tuesday 5.30, right up to 7.30, depending 8. Okay, depending 10. Okay, so we are here at 5.30 this, this uh, Tuesday. Evangelism again, we're back to Njube. This is the third week. Let's please, those that are able to join us this Saturday, let's head back to, to Njube as well. Great, great people in, in Njube. Ushering, the ushering department would like to extend an invitation to the church. All those interested in joining ushering, provided you are served, you've been in this church for some time, and you want to be an usher, who do they see? They see Mr. K here. Stand, please, Mr. K. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mr. K. This is, this is the man to see after the service. See this man. Okay. Thank you. Next. Amy. This is a ministry of those between 22 years to 30 years of age. There's a special service on the 4th of July, which is next Saturday, not this Saturday. Oh, sorry, not this Sunday, next Sunday. Oh, it's a combined one. It's a combined with a blaze. Sorry? Oh, Nanji says they're talking about sex. Mm, it's not me, it's Nanji who says they're talking about sex. Mm. All right, come here, Nanji, come and stand here. Maybe they'll come if they, they know it's you going to talk. Mm. Nanji and others will be talking about sex. Yeah. Yeah. Parents, don't be afraid. We want to teach you guys, kids, about sex. Yeah. Because out in the world... Not practically, hopefully. No, 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 no. no. We want to... <laughs> there will be no sex I positions or anything. <laughs> but we believe that out in the world, they're already uh, doing that. So we yeah. want to give them a, a godly Biblical. foundation so that they indeed. don't stray out there. Yeah, indeed. So come in here about the subject of sex. We must teach about sex in churches. Because you know it far better than we do. So we must teach you so that you do it with the knowledge. When you say do it in marriage with knowledge, say amen. Mm. Please talk to your neighbor and say, you appear holy, but I know you know much about sex. Talk to them and say, Njega wi skebenga. Skebenga wen, skebenga. Yeah. So there you are, this coming is it a Sunday? Oh, this afternoon. That's when you're, you're the teaching on sex is. Oh, I thought it was combined next week. So is this this after, at three or at two thirty three three o'clock? Okay. So I know you have time for for the subject on sex. So you will come. Even then, we chat today. Now on Sunday, we allow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, it'll be very good for you to join them at three. Next, choir, the award-winning choir, this choir, is inviting those interested in joining them uh, for the choir, for vocalists, and those who play instruments. Please, if you, let me start with those that play instruments. If you play any form of instrument, lift up your hand. Whether it's a piano, accordion, saxophone, trumpet, tambourine, I tambourine, I. <laughs> but if you play any form of instrument, I want to see you lifting up your hand. Is there anybody who plays any form of drums or bass guitar, lead guitar? Is there anybody? All right. Anybody who would want to join? Yeah. Oh, I see those hands. Please lift up, stand up and stand. Mm. Somebody, come, come right here. 
because it takes a lot of effort. And is there a hand there? Oh, yeah, thank you. Mm. Are you sure you play an instrument? What instrument do you play? Keyboard. Oh, sure. You play an instrument? Sir? Which one? Keyboard. Wow. Oh, you play an instrument? Sir? Which one? Bass. Bass guitar. Okay. Hey. Brian Bela Kukulunga Kula. Oh, Nancy Gaza. Mm. What do you play? Piano. Piano or keyboard? Piano, proper piano. Whoa! Who taught you to play piano? You taught yourself? Or your parents sent you to school? Huh? You play by ear. Proper piano. Oh! Ask me to play piano. Hey! Eh? See, I'm busy playing piano. You play by ear. So if you play by ear, then you can pick whatever we are doing here, isn't it? Yeah. It's those that play notes, isn't it? That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. These are leaders. This is a man and his wife. Mm -hmm. The wife is not always like this. It's just, it's just, for, it's just for this season. Uh, it's season now. Okay. <laughs> here it comes and goes. <laughs> Come, it has come. This is the third time this has come. Okay. So they want to talk to you briefly. Okay, please. Because you are very key in this. If you can go with them, I would allow you to take them in there. Please. Just follow them. Thank you. Thank you. Right. As born in Abachai Tamburin. Abachai Tamburin Maga. Mama Abachai Tamburin. Oh, you worship. Eh, katika kapa mo worship na inga tenga ela. Eh, o abacha ama o abacha ama worship. Acha ega everybody yung acha ela. All right. I know I didn't emphasize on those that want to sing using your voice. Even if you don't know how to sing well, like the front row here, uh, but they will teach you how to sing. Please show me by lifting up your head and say, I would love to be part of this. These, some of these guys are recording. I think in the next two weeks, we believe they'll be start, starting to record. There are three companies that we're engaging to record these because they have done everything, 19 songs to be exact, with um, Kize, Lindelan Kize, who's come through here for four to five uh, phases or block releases that he's come here to train, teach, do production, and so forth. That stage is done. It's the recording stage that's crucial. Okay. Yesterday they were trying their new clothes that we bought. Hmm. Good to my musician here, Harvest House. Hey, And want to thank this team that went and others in Harare that brought clothes and suits from, from Turkey and, and elsewhere to make sure that these guys are looking the part. Okay. We're invading social media seriously after the master copies are released. We then invade the social media to make sure that our music album three is all over. All over. We are investing in music. Is that not a good thing to invest in music? Yes. They spend time training and disciplining themselves. It's only a wise leader that will invest back in their lives to make sure that they are a success and they are not confined only to us here, but they are heard all over, all over the world. Say amen if you agree with that. Music is going to be very prophetic in the closing days. Music is key. Music is a driver of many things. There are many preachers that thrive because of music. I'm one of them. I love music. I may not sing, but I just love music. I enjoy it. Whatever I feel it, whatever I hear it, I connect with it. And I invest in it a lot in terms of resources, money. Say amen. Now, can I ask, did you, can I, can I ask those that are in the...
super choir. Come, come right here, please. And my singer, I use a dog to advertise. Mm. There. Give me, a, give me a microphone here. Oh, they are carrying a microphone anyway. You're in the super choir, hold the microphone. All those in the super choir, what is the super choir? We have many churches, many churches. Out of these many churches, we select the top musicians to be in this super choir. And then we record them. We are doing album number three now. Okay, album number three is going to be special. I've heard some of the songs. Kizzy himself, he says they are not refined, but when I listen to them, they are just perfect before refining. They're going to a stage called, uh, uh, what is this stage called? Mixing, yeah. Okay, and then mastering. And then what comes out there will be very perfect. All right. So many of you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I am sure I counted well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19. Okay. Say, Paul, you're one of them. 20, 21. Where, where is the other? 22. Oh, Lama. 22. Yeah. 22 of them from this church. Uh, who's the other one? Oh, Chichi. There. 23. Mm -hmm. So almost half of the super choir comes from where I am. It's not me choosing them, just in case you think I'm, I'm playing first one. No, I don't even get involved in audition as to who sings which song. I don't want to interfere. I don't want to hire people like in keys and tell them, put this one there, put that. No, that's not proper. Okay. So they chose, and it seems 25 come from us here. From what I'm hearing, there are 58 of them. 58 of them. That means uh, 58 from uh, 25 is 23, roundabout. Mm -hmm. Is that so? Okay. So 23 come from elsewhere, our, our different house. Can I ask who's holding the microphone? Yeah. Who's Bonnie Limpat? Who was Limanis? I was there, by the way, when they were trying these clothes, uh, because I bought them, so I must be there. I wasn't watching them change, you know. They went and changed, and I saw them after. Just so as soon as I said, oh, Bishop, who is Kai 11 No. They were changing. They were using our building across there. Okay. Yeah. So you must clarify all things when you are talking to church people. So you must clarify. Right. Uh, you felt, how is, the, how is the fashion this year? Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, you are a lawyer when you speak well. Yes. Stand there. Stand there, lawyer. Okay. There. Mm. Yeah. So, why is it great? Why is it greater than, than the, let's go back, were you there in the first album? No, second. Second. Why is it greater than the second album? Because it's, it's different. How? Um, it's modern. It's what? It's modern. It's modern. Yes. Oh, so honest. you mean what we did it was not modern? <laughs> no, I'm teasing. So it's modern. Yes, yes, it's modern. It's relevant for now. It's relevant for yes. now. Yeah, yeah. You think it would reach out to which age group? This, these clothes there. Mm. Uh, tw twelve to twenty who? No, 12 to 35. To 35. Mainly 12 to 35, yeah. yes. But the suits, I mean, the suits will reach out to... Uh, the suits will then go beyond 35. Beyond, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Give, give the microphone to Abigail. Abigail. Mm. Yeah, well, sure. Were you there the first uh, album? No, I joined... Yeah, the album. first album you were not there. Yes. And uh, it is when I saw you sulking at one time. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> That she was pausing, <laughs> and so we were in church, hall number four. I looked aside. I thought I saw her catching pain. Pain being the fact that maybe she missed it. Mm. So I went to talk to her. Is that true? My story is true? <laughs> is my story true? Yes. Uh, so I encouraged her. Mm. One way or the other. It's a long encouragement. It's a long story. But she's here today. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. But for me, I think Abigail is highly anointed. Highly, highly anointed. Yeah. May God bless you. So you, you felt that suits you as well? I saw you wearing a... Yeah. I don't want to disclose the colors now. But you thought, you thought that was good for you? 
Yes, as for me, mm. all my clothes fitted in well. Mm. I didn't have to alter anything. Yeah. It's like how I was there when they were doing hey, the shopping. Was not, was not <laughs> <laughs> so, um, mm. yeah. Do you like what you, you wore yes, yesterday? Definitely. What you're going to wear? Yes. Do you think you'll appear good in yes, social media, I YouTube? Think, mm -hmm. Like mm. you're saying, it goes with the anointing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 I don't oh, see, I tell a church. Right. Um, thank you so much, Bishop. Good. Thank you for making us look great. Good. Thank you. Um, thank you, ma'am. Yes, you bought clothes that you're not going to wear yourself. No. no. But you sacrifice for us. Hey, it's good to have you. May the yeah. good Lord bless you. Good. Hey, Joy, you're part of those that worked hard. Joy, Molly, come, come and stand. We stand, Molly. Where is the other one? Where is, is there? Uh, where is he? Who? who? The, who? The fat. The, the fat, so come, come right here. Come right here to yeah. Alex, where is Alex? Hey, we are Alex. Ching Kung We are we are up stage in the Alex. Hey Alex, Tata Machina is not a Ruga Gumbe fashion. Molly climb up here. Yes. Where is Yeah. There's the handsome dude here. With broad shoulders. Do you do weights? Um, yes, dude. Your brother does, not you. Yeah. Okay. Tell us, yeah, what happened? You worked hard, guys. You worked hard and, and went after sharing whatever you wanted to purchase. Tell us the journey in a nutshell. What, what, how was the journey? Yeah, in, no. yeah tell us in South Africa. How in was South it? Africa, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no. The journey in South Africa was hectic because mm -hmm. we were crunched for time. Yeah. And then it's the outfits this year are not like one size fits all. So yeah. we wanted to run away from the whole spani look. We wanted people yeah. to look individual and have outfits that suit their body shapes and sizes. Correct. So yeah. you can imagine navigating sizes for 60 people, breaking that down and saying, this suits this, this suits this, this suits this. Mm -hmm. They all have a shoe that works with their dress, that works with their... So we had to go various locations. Yeah. yeah, it was just a lot of work. Mats, I didn't know a lot of mats goes into that, but we were coming. Lots of mats, yeah. <laughs> mats, mm. logistics in terms of where can you find what at one location. Mm. So we were exhausted. We came back sick. We were running in the streets with sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was work, but it Thank, was good. Thank you so much, the four of you, for, for the effort. We want to thank Mama Tuturu is doing the techie side, isn't it? Uh, as well. Uh, thank you. Let's put our hands together for these four of us. We appreciate it. Let me ask uh, one more time. Let me ask Nigel here uh, before I go to uh, Mimi there. I'll come to you, Mimi. Nigel, I saw you trying a, a, a suit. Yes, for sure. What, what was wrong with the suit? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to say what was wrong on the other side, but let's blame the suit. The suit was wrong. <laughs> the suit was small. I think it. <laughs> but with a few alterations. But the, okay. but it, the tailor is good, isn't it? Yes, yeah, this is yes. my tailor there. His best tailor in town. Yeah, if you want the best tailor in town, that tailor is good. Yes. So you make it good for you. Yes. So it will work out well. Yeah. So you like everything else? Yes, mm. it's beautiful. Me. Sure? I'm so happy. Good. Yeah. Where is this, Mimi? You came when I, were, you, were you there when they were trying? You were not there, so you can't talk there. Yeah. So, so, Maro, did you finally come? Yeah. Come, come with the. Uh, thank you. Lava bang abuya nga lizas patele ugu chinchi. Were you there? Did you finally come? Yes. Okay. Tell us, Maro. Mm -hmm. When you were there, album one, album two, now album three. Right, tell us what's different now in terms of. I care. feel like an ancestor. There. You feel like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, now in terms of clothing. What do you okay, mean? Uh, they, they have their own unique feel. Yeah. But it's a feel good feel. Yeah. It's um, anyone, like, I feel like all ages will identify. All ages, yes. yeah. That's the main aim of yes. doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Then finally, the good sister here. Laura, I'm told Laura can see. Is that so cool? Yes. You are trying to convince me, come and convince me here. Yeah. Laura can see? Sure. I'm sorry? 
It's rumors, yeah. It is, yeah, it is rumors that Laura can sing. What you say is it's cooking. There's a microphone. Mm. Sure, 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 CB. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Bishop, for the opportunity. I think I'm going to get a little bit of 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 it's super quiet, Bishop. It's super quiet. Yeah. Did Bam drown a band? I should did out. So her song is good. Powerful. Yeah. She blew all of us away. Wow. It was just a different sound, the tone. Yeah. Um, managing her voice. Yeah. Coming out of the comfort zone. So she literally did exactly what was expected. My God. So yeah. she, for me, yeah. I was shocked. I kept on also hearing, hearing. And actually experience it. You have heard this song, some of them, I know they are not yet out. What do you think? Album one, Genesis, album two, being at the altar, album three, no name is yet here. Yeah. Yes. What do you think with no name? Hey, mm. no name is powerful. Yeah. Um, for me, it's the lyrical content yeah. in those songs and the fact that I think almost all the songs were written by all our musicians from the yeah. clash of choirs and mm -hmm. some of them came um yeah. during the song selection yeah. and the the different genres that we catered for bishop is yeah. just outstanding from the Beautiful. traditional the english even the choir songs we've got choir songs as well mm -hmm. this year so it's a different sound it's a fresh sound and we are so so excited wow yeah, yeah. more so that all of them or most of them are going to have different backgrounds isn't it yes, yes. a song with a different background yes just um, my leg is change, and, mm. and for me what i also like this year is we are seeing fresh people yeah. growing and um coming out for me yes. that was just beautiful yeah. seeing new conveners people that you know people that you didn't expect to yeah. see and now everyone is just being Talented pulled out it was just beautiful yeah. Wow, that's very good. Now, you are involved in the choreography now. Yes. You are this high. <laughs> how are you? How are, there are 19 songs there. Yes. How are you going to do it? Okay. Sure. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. She's I managed. I was in Janoti energy. She's a good. Well, I'm asking deliberately. I don't know whether the church wants. Uh, yeah, to, but I it's a good. Yeah. <laughs> so you think she can do it? She can do 19 songs? Yes. Um. Yeah. I think with the way that they are doing, she should be fine. She should be she's fine. not doing it alone. Uh, yeah. She's she's working with the team. She said so. Yes. Yeah. yes. So okay. the team are coming up. The ideas are coming from the guys yeah. as well as her. So I think with the way that they're handling it, yeah, it will work out. She'll yeah. be fine. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. I was just trying to appetize some of you. Any of you who join the music, the talent here, we have local savile bathroom. No one will hear you. Except I'm a who was in the bathroom, my man. So if you think you can sing, and you know you have a gift, we want to expose it to others. These songs are heard all over, all over the world. They're coming from sounds from this place, and all our churches across. But from these choirs here, that will take time. Okay. So should you now, so that I don't embarrass you, feel ah, la mia kuta. At the end of the service, go and see that couple. They will induct you and then train you. Who knows, you may be one of the Lauras here that we are hearing about. Okay, coming through. May God bless you and God. I forgot to ask, how many of you here are actually leading songs? You are, you are a convener of a song. C come and stand here, those that have been chosen. I just want to ask something here. So you are, you are leading out of 19 songs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of you, yeah. Or oh, eight with Chichi, right there at the back, yeah. How, how did they choose you, for example? How did they choose you? Who chose you? Yeah, but uh, why, did, why do you think they chose you? I know you sing well, maybe. But how did they choose you? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I'm not quite sure. What happened was... They, they gave you a song. They gave us a song and they would ask um, anyone want to try the right. song. 
and they were giving people a chance to try it. Each so they, song. they felt the song suits you? Yes. And you tried the song? Yes. And they gave the song to you? Yes. Wow. Wow. I would dare not ask. And you? Ah, uh, I was just coming to the practice and then they were like, uh, anyone else wants to try the song? Amy, come. They said, anybody wants to try the song? And then they mentioned my name. That's how it happened. Some kids that listen to you sing? Yes. And he says the song suits you. Yes. Hey, Banjwenkos, yeah. When did you come? When did you come? When did you come here? I started coming mid last year. Mid last year. Yes. Hey, Kangela, but mid last year, aren't you? All right, Laura. Laura, um, you're a veteran. You were here at Genesis, I think. Yes, oh, yeah. I was. Yes. But, but no one gave you a song. No one gave me a song then. <laughs> eh? No one did. Eh, but Gadis, they gave you a song. Yeah, they did. So they were offering as to who would sing this song. For me, uh, Tremia actually said, Laura, there's a song. You have to try it out and see how Who it said that? Tremia. Tremia said, try this song. Mm -hmm. And you tried it. And I tried it. Why for Taylor, man? I <laughs> OK. Niger. Uh, so what happened to you? Uh, I wrote a song and sent the recording. You wrote the song? Yes. So you are singing the song that you sang? Yes. That you wrote, right? That I wrote, yes. That's yes, very, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they were going to give it to someone else, isn't it? Yes, yes. So we had to, as well. I'm going to get to look at the movie. I'm going to get to the movie. I'm uh, you, I, I see your sister, is, is your, was your sister given a song? No, no, no. Oh, she wasn't given yeah, a song. Just, but your sister is in the choir. Yeah, yeah. okay. She's pretty, eh? Very pretty. <laughs> Very pretty lady. You should see the sister here. No, not here. She's in the yeah, other Osana, choir. Osana. Osana. Mm. Yeah. Mm. By far. All right, mm, yeah? Uh, I, I'd written a song as well, just like Nigel. You wrote a song? Yeah. So you're singing your song? Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. You didn't write a song. Oh, you wrote a song. No. They gave you that song. Yes. Oh, gang, gang, gang. What if? Yes, so that's you're singing that song. Yes. Hey. <laughs> when a lady is young, fine, a lady is close. A lady. Hey, thank you, thank you, Kay. All right. You are hitting public domain. Is that public domain this year? Yes. It's public yes. domain. Yes. That's your speciality there. Uh, that's what they felt. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what I feel too. I mean, they, they, they are right to do that. Yeah. Yes, so I'll be doing that. You'll be doing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I am trying to inspire. I never do anything. I'm not even wasting time here. I'm trying to minister to someone here who may be sitting with a talent and you don't know that you're sitting with a talent. Yeah. Churches expose talent. Good churches invest in that talent. Who knows, you may be seen on television. You watch our music, it's on one gospel, and everywhere else is sung in the UK, sung in the States, as you go with different people that are coming from here. So if you're sitting with a talent, see that couple there. It all starts low down there, and then you'll be elevated down there. Say amen. Thank you again, choir. Thank you for the hours that you spend practicing. You are truly, truly a blessing. I know I give you a hard time. I preach about you a lot, which is good because I lose, but mm, it's good. Mm, thank you. I want us to put our hand, stand up chair just for a few minutes. Yeah. Let's put our hands together for this. Guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All of us, by the way, see what you are doing. You may think we are not seeing. That's why we are interested in what we are doing. That's why we give a lot of money towards what you are doing. It costs a lot of money to produce an album. That's why you can't produce it on your own. To produce quality album could be 200,000 200, US dollars or more to produce a good, good, good album. Because of the many players involved that must be paid, plus practice sessions, people that must be flown, recording companies, all this very crucial. We will do it for this generation. Amen. Otherwise, back to the Oh, sexy thing. Yeah, yeah. Sexy thing. Sexy thing.
and potentially back to the Mestabela Konoku, but Singababambe Nko Sini Lapa Basalwa, especially Lina Basali. Let's invest in these young people. Let's put a lot of money in them. Tomorrow, it takes two years to invest, and you see quality musicians coming all over. Okay, all over, all over. That will touch nations. Say amen. amen. Mm. We invest in preachers as well. With our preachers at that is But we do invest in preachers. Thank you so much, musicians. Keep on doing what you are doing. The sky is the limit. Remember this. Our view is to move over that new building. New building in December. That's what we are working hard to do. With this man, that man, there, that man, there, that man. We are all pushing. Okay, we are taking your dollars and completing. We are perfecting now. Glazing up front, glazing bottom. Very soon you'll be seeing glazing in front, doors covered. Another company starting next week, the administration, and then you'll see glasses all over. Very beautiful building after glazing and doors. Plumbing is starting, started yesterday. Okay, so that toilets are ready, at least some toilets are ready. We have over 100 toilets there that to just show you the magnitude of the bill. 100 toilets. So we should allow me to lie in a normal diarrhea. We are using You can't, you can't. There is. And which I look at diarrhea in your massages. So you'll be all right there. We have toilets wherever you look, wherever you turn, it's a toilet, 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 toilet up, toilet down, toilet this corner, toilet that corner. Everywhere, toilets. We are building it so that this generation can launch from and make sure that their music is heard internationally. That's been my vision for a long time. Okay. We have a building there, but that's not international building. That is international building. That if you stood there and saying, I don't care, Russia will hear you. Okay. That's why we've taken time. Five years to be exact by November building that large colossal structure and uh, it's for the next generation these are the generations that we must build anyone who lives without the next generation in view is squandering their life They're destroying your life always live with the next generation in mind i wish politicians could hear that politicians leave this nation for the next generation yeah, don't squander things. Even now, about make sure as you leave, you are thinking of the next generation. It could be your children in the natural, it could be your spiritual children. Make sure the next generation is comfortable and they are not cursing you for having lived before they lived. Because we you don't deserve to be called a father. You are a thug. Fathers have posterity in mind. They have sons and daughters in mind. You and I, we are living here in Zimbabwe. Always please, as you drive in the streets, as you see buildings, make sure that the next generation is in your spirit. But as they walk in, they don't start from ground miners too. They start on our shoulders. Hey, Tina studies as renta, Emma Classin, in church. She rent a theater. She rent in a car. I started this church in my home. A bedroom, yam, Labantonabam was in Sunday school. So I can't let the next generation start that way. I would have failed as a leader. Uh -huh. It is that these guys who have been singing somewhere in a corner must be heard. Is that not so? They must be heard. Someone must hear them. They must find life easy because their fathers lived. Not things difficult because of their fathers. Equally so if we take that view for the nation of Zimbabwe. Oh, man, we will leave this nation better off. Yeah, we can't leave roads like this. Mm. Potholes. For the next generation. Hey, I'm a building. I'm a toilet. I'm a seven zero. For the next generation. Tasi steti lebantu na bam. Seska mbo kufukwe uchia uchi mess. We can't live a mess. Mm, you can't live a mess. So it teaches you that whatever you are touching.
touch it with the next generation in mind. If you're touching a cell phone, it could go to somebody else. Uh -huh. If you're sitting on a plastic chair, it, somebody may sit there. If you're using a toilet, please, <laughs> aim to please. <laughs> That's a loaded word. Aim to please. <laughs> yeah. Aim to please. Whatever you're doing, have the next person who comes after you in mind. Hey, if we carry that philosophy, I tell you, we'll be great leaders that ever existed. I say amen. So, when you have to bring all the Konapadli satellite lapamo offerings and so forth, 22 million US dollars, look at this, Sipan. So, when you have to will think of you and praise you. They will think, hey, you are a pila. Lapan, Ongla Boba, Lapan because we managed to sacrifice for the next generation. Say amen. amen. Please look at your neighbor and say, what are you sacrificing for the next generation? Mm. What are you doing now for the next generation? What are you doing? Let me, let me talk of that. I just feel the anointing too. Hey, we are, we are in the Babaloma. Come, come right here. When I say Babaloma, I'm just calling mafias. Mm. You in building a school, you are thinking of the next generation. Hey. You may not have known it whether whether you started wanting money, I don't know. But really, did you start wanting money? <laughs> but you, you are building for the next generation. Yeah. There will be people long after you're gone to say there was a man called Baba Mafira mm. with a beautiful woman called Tenji. Uh -huh. <laughs> they build a school. It's very rare to find people that build schools. I wouldn't change so when you buy a bosom can no corner. When we are in school, you know, so I see a car. It's look, Zenku Kunjeula, so Jesus. These have built a private school. Hey, you end up form four now. But form six. You are going to form six. Oh, you are form six, or you are going to form six. We have lower six this. You have lower six this time. So you are going for upper six. What's the name of your school and where is it? Mm -hmm. What's the name of the school? Okay, it's called Liberty Christian College. Liberty Christian College. Yes, situated in Padernest. In Padernest. Yes. Just behind. Just behind. We share defense with the barracks. You share defense. You are protected. <laughs> well protected. Well protected. Yes. yes. So, if any one of these people want to register properly and pay fees, no freebies here, but pay fees, how do they do it? Uh, well, uh, I would encourage that they visit the school first. They visit the school first? Yes. To see for themselves? To see for themselves. Right? There's a man confident about his school. <laughs> so, so, visit the school first. Uh -huh. So, there's a private school. If you want to see them after the service, please, you can see them. They will direct you as to go and see their school. As long as they're able to pay fees. As long as they're able to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a very good point. As long as they're able to pay private school fees. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Because it's very expensive, private schools. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Because while you're building there, the next generation will praise you. Yeah, certainly, because it's a structure. Africans don't build things. They consume more. Bang a little bit thing on my chips. Lemon tart. Limpath. Hey, I impath. As chill any generation, maybe I easy in twenty. Hey, but banana. I hope this at the amen parent. Hey, in next generation, in easy in two. Es bambega ayo. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for this and release that grace on you to build things. Lift your hands up. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm receiving today the anointing to be a builder, to build structures, any form of structures, so that the next generation will enjoy our sacrifices. We are not consumers. 
We are builders in the name of Jesus. Change that grace. Release it upon our lives. And all of us will think of the next generation. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hey, same tetis cut, but I hope we will see you in a low kind. Gonke look who Velis Balama announcements. MLI Thursday prayer meetings 5:30 here. Next announcement, please. Next. Home groups. Everyone is encouraged to belong to a home group. I haven't seen the list as yet on the wall. Who's responsible for? Please, can we have the list? Yeah. This week, right there, of all cell groups. You must belong to a cell group. Wherever you are, find a cell group near you by next week. We will be saying after service, go through there or there. You will see in your own suburb where there's a midweek cell group on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Bride couples are having a bride. Okay, when is this Saturday? This Saturday. Eighth, by the way, we say it. Eighth. Okay. All right, time for tithes and offerings. We are giving threefold. I have taught myself right through this season to carry three envelopes. One for the album recording. Another one for the building structure. That's near completion. And another one for tithes and offerings or offerings. Okay. Join me in this one. Very important. If you can, three envelopes that you must put money into. We have many churches that are helping us, our churches, to build, but we must play our part as, as HQ here. After all, it's us that are moving there that will utilize this building more. All right. If you need an envelope, ask, just lift up your hand. Our ushers will come to you. Whoever needs an envelope, I'm carrying a few here. You can lift up your hand. Is everybody given? All right. Don't forget every Sunday, once we have recorded, we will eliminate the album envelope. We will remain with the building project envelope. Hopefully come December, uh, we are having a mini conference there and move over there. I got a call from uh, uh, Dr. Howard Brown. Uh, uh, last week okay he's trying to set a day or two to come here in Blauer. Hard Brown is a powerful revivalist a man that moves mightily in the Holy Spirit if you never read of to him google him and you'll find out what type of a man he is he's a powerful powerful man okay so he wants to come for a day or two so hopefully we can entertain him at that place incomplete as it is in September. Okay, and make sure we have those services. All right, we are carrying three envelopes here. Can I read scripture? Second Corinthians 9, I believe, verses 6 to 8. If you put that scripture for me, if it won't take you years to put it uh, like you are taking years. Right, those that feel to go are at years, though there's no value in it, they, they hate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I said, even Jani read Baba Torunam. Eh? Zabu Zabu. But roughly, what do you think? Ten to one. Eight point three. You can imagine. Eight point three. So whatever. Are you going to see? There's the scripture. But this I say to you, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 7 says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver like me. Hmm. Verse 8. Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace, say all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work that means god empowers you as you give towards his work i'll lift up your envelopes whatever you're carrying 
Let's pray for you. Father, we believe in sowing seeds. We are sowing seeds, Lord, not necessarily because we are empowered, but we are sowing out of a need, knowing that you will move on our behalf and empower us in a supernatural way. Amen. Can I encourage, this is now towards month end, those teams of ours, we put your name in a schedule where Pastor Mtha is talking to you. Please make sure you, 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 you honor that because month end we need to pay as HQ towards our building project. Okay, we have names here, about seven, I'm part of them. Uh, some are taking lots of money, some small amounts, nevertheless. If we put you in a schedule where Pastor Mtha is, please honor that, that, that amount. We're doing that for three months. We did it last month, this month, and the next month. Okay. All right, giving time. You can stand. If you're nearer the lady there, put it there, but ultimately it comes in the trunk. Thank you. Give a song, please. That's why you stood. Yeah, a song. Thank you. to stand up as we read scripture and share the word and dismiss you stand please stand we are dealing thank you choir thank you we are dealing with the subject of honor the power of honor this we have dealt with for two months. I believe this is the last Sunday we are dealing with this subject on honor. Next week should be July, so we are going to Jesus Christ. You want to climb up there? Thank you. Right. 
So May and June, we have been dealing with honor. I, this is the last Sunday in June, so we are completing that and Tuesday to complete honor. July, August, Jesus Christ. That's what we want to know about the man called Jesus Christ. So that's our July and August. Then September, October, we're talking of favor, this mantle of favor. And then as we close the year, November, December, wealth transfer. So we teach about six subjects only in 12 months to make sure that you are grounded and you establish all our churches are following this pattern, but we approach it differently, the subject. We present it to you different. So wherever you go in Harvest House Church, across Zimbabwe, in South Africa, in Swaziland, in UK, in Australia, in Ghana, in, in Botswana, in Namibia, you will find us teaching these things. So that all our sons and daughters grow, get to know the same things, at the same time. So today, I am said that um, we are done with that subject there. I still had much more to say about it, but hey, we will leave it for some other years, isn't it? I could have taught one solid year on that power of on a beautiful subject. All right, today I am teaching on honoring with ease. How to honor without any difficulty in your life. Shall we pray? Father, we ask that you'll anoint your word as we share it today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, Sheps, thank you so much. I know you have been. Hey, Sheps, you look poisoned today. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm before I lay into the open. Yeah, good. Yeah, man on a partnership. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Sheps is a single man, mm, very serious man. Sheps is an athlete. He has medals. He runs for gold. Mm. <laughs> Are you still a good runner, Sheps? So what better? Okay. So what here? Sheps with Agula Mar. Because this is love of any man. I said, yeah, Thank you for coming here this morning. You could have been elsewhere, but you chose to be here today. We want to read one scripture today, and then you can sit down. Let me give you six points, and then we are gone. Romans 13, verse 7. Let's read it together. One, two, and three. Mm -hmm. It is a subject of honor. Let me start in the valley while you are standing. Stand with me just a few minutes here. Honor. He won't pay. He won't do it. To recognize that people are not always equal. I know the church equalizes all of us as we sit and we come at the feet of Jesus. But at a certain point in time, you must realize that people are different. The person who may be standing next to you there may not necessarily be like you be different from you and therefore if you notice that and you do notice that they are of a higher grade a higher rank than you it's proper to honor them don't worship people please we're not talking of worshiping people it's a sin to worship a human being but to honor is very important for example you and your parents are not in the same grade you may have a degree or degrees or PhDs, or VDs, or DVDs, whatever it is you have. You are not the same with your parents. 
Your parents beget you. They caused you to become. You are what you are because of that man, woman, who may not necessarily be more educated than you, but they have caused you to become. And therefore, when they are talking to you, you pay attention to them. You don't say, oh, mommy, I sleep a lot, oh, mommy, I sleep a lot. When your mother says, Zoto, or Stochi, or Sasa, or Mtunduluga, I don't know what your name is. Come home and see me. I want to talk to you. I say, yes, you put my man Zabuya. Nini, Zabuya, my Tony's card. No. If you want to get a blessing from your parents, which you don't know, by the way, that it exists, many people don't know. They look at their parents, but when they go to school, when your parents speak to you, pay attention. They may release something in your life that will change your life forevermore. Abanye Sure. But Because he rank yake e higher than you when I'm charismatic. That changes your life. It changes your life. So parents are to be respected and honored. If you don't honor your parents and honor other fundies who have other parents, you are in trouble. Who's a border? How a border? Even the boyfriend, they lie. He's a kangiliti. He is from Malaysia. He lies to his. Ah ah ah! Iguale. Iguale. No, we are giving it to you. Yala umuntu lo vele. I still want to write. May God teach you to honor your parents. Anga tarisi ya message inza kutume zanji li enji ni amla yonte. Hey, honor your parents. Honor those who may not be your parents, but you perceive they have achieved more. Abantu ba loya yo ngaba mafunugu honor banya bad. When someone is better than you. Go to them and say, you know what? I appreciate the way Amen. you have developed yourself. I appreciate the way where you are. I appreciate that we're at school together, but you're a CEO and I'm not looking to any street. In. You must have done something better than I do. I want to tell you I honor that. Unga ulandira loka uso zwa loya. Unga ilu ulandira uza loya. Autatis katunga loya. Uza loya, 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 loya. Please look at your neighbor and say, jeng haoen. Because you can't appreciate. Africans find it very hard to appreciate achievers among themselves. Ah, just to know and say, I'm going to know and say, because we are connected. I go find out who politician I am. I go find out who is my mum, mama. I go find out who are my shortcuts. Eh, bottom power or whatever power. Eh, no one can say we in the world. You have done well. Eh, when we celebrate you, and we all come in and clap hands for your achievements. If you are among people that can celebrate where you are and what you are doing, come out and leave them. You are in the wrong company. Find people that will celebrate you and say, we like what you are doing. We like where you are going. We like the way you have done things. Those are the people that will take you far. And therefore you are able to own. Say amen. Teach yourself to own. Even a fool in a you say this person is achieving more than I do, and I want to salute you. Oh, I want to do a PhD. Ufundile, I saw what we take in. Ufundile, who are going to the pants? What the pants were fundies so a child, he O level, a child A level, a catcher, a child first degree, a child masters. Wake up and get a PhD. Who's a vet? A PhD. I will inject. Who's a vet? So I'm going to enjoy him for the Mm. I have many of my sons and daughters with uh, PhDs. Many of them. Many of them. I was preaching this 
past three weeks at Mama Kaliati's funeral, one of my sons walked in. He's the vice chancellor of Pindura University. While I was standing, I'm preaching on honor. I had to honor him. He is my son. I prophesied over him many years ago at the theater and said, you, the way you are sweeping the streets, this is what I'm sweeping our auditorium. Yeah. You are going to be a vice chancellor. Oh, wow. One of these. Hey, I prophesy. My prophecies come true, by the way. Love Mahubambi's prophet. Say a poem. What is Mahubambi's prophet, Bishop? Nina Mahubambi's prophet. Say Kurumila and Gujema Sayonpe. Nina Mahubambi's prophet. I don't know if you prophet. I don't know if you can do it, but I don't know prophet. But if I give you a prophetic word, you can put it to pass in your life. Say amen. amen. I say to him, are you are sweeping our, our church. Ship the church. Every morning you come seven o'clock. It was in our church. It was a theater we're renting. The theater along Job Road. This man with a, a PhD will be sweeping the streets and cleaning the toilets. I was moved one day when I found him cleaning the toilet. I said, let me give you a prophetic word. You're going to need a university vice chancellor. I don't think he believed me. I repeated it again some years. And again, he's a vice chancellor on one of the most successful universities called Pindura University. Yeah, he's a vice chancellor. He's my pastor. When I say he's my pastor, he's leading one of my churches there. Mm. So I had to honor him. This is the point I'm trying to raise. I had to honor him. I had to stop and say, oh yeah, the vice chancellor of the University of Pindura is here in our midst. Not knowing that I prophesied over the man. Wow. Mm. Hey. Wow. Hey. Wow. I can prophesy over your things. Hey, 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 church. Hey, 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 Please look at your neighbor and say, honor someone in your life. Aha, honor someone. Oh, to my video, cool, Lydia. Hey, about can you appear about no sense of you? to go to church. Bishop, you did a full of my church. You can tell them the fridge. You can tell them the Tatana. I mean, I last very long to go to the operator. Because people can't attribute success to God and celebrate it. They must find something that pulls you down. I pray that you celebrate your neighbor. Cross our vote Macedonian Please look at your neighbor church, celebrate people that are doing well. Fine. The people that are doing well and go to them and say, I like what you are doing. Yeah. Celebrate them. Take it tissue. I see my little teacher. See what's in them. I couldn't leave what to face Pesco. I was on Sala Pesco. Okay. Thank you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, I want you to practice that. Look at the person next to you and say, should you succeed in life, I will be there to celebrate. I will be there to talk about you, the good things about you. They catch pain. Hey. Husbands. Husbands. Husbands are very strange people. They want to succeed, but should their wives be empowered? Oh, they feel bad. Uh, they feel bad. How would it be to sit down and listen to your wife preach? You do. Does he? He enjoys your messages. He's a good man. 
you have you are one of the few. We are sure my alone moment. Hey, in Tigala we are chatting. Hey, yeah, in Tigala we are chatting. O pregeti, o bena na o chabulela. Now, how do you chuma? I don't say go one chuma. Why you pay that bad? Man, let's celebrate these women when they're doing well. When your wife goes up, is lifted up, you are lifted up. After all, she's carrying your surname. So why fight with someone who's carrying your surname? Hey, I was sitting yesterday eating lunch at my wife's office. Because we were there watching this, so someone brought me lunch there. I went into I looked at the awards that are on her wall. What really comforted me is that my awards are many as well. But I looked at I looked at the award. That, 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 right round awards. Hey. <laughs> but you must teach yourself to celebrate your wife. Say amen. Because wives, it's natural for them to celebrate their husband. They have no issues. It's men. Hey, please take your seats. I'm waffling now, going off tangent. Over the two months, ladies and gentlemen, I have been teaching on this subject. I love teaching because people, when they're taught, they understand better. I have been teaching on honor. I just scribbled a few subjects that I have touched here. I touched on signs of dishonor. When you want to see if someone is dishonoring you, they always want to pull you down. Not to their level, but lower than their level. When you're in a company like that, you come out among them. Find a new company. Find people that will celebrate you. Did you celebrate these people that were given songs to sing? I'm saying, did you go to them personally and say, congratulations? I'm talking of you, choir. Did you go to them? Ah, I am asking, did you go to them? If you haven't, go back to them and say, congratulations this year. Hey, hey, we sing well. Next time, it will be you. Signs of dishonor. I went on also to touch on stages of dishonor. Dishonor has stages. <laughs> and they are progressive stages. From one level to the other. Until a higher level where demons enter you. Because your heart is so bad. And therefore your heart is susceptible to demonic invasions. Because you are full of grief inside. Why? Because someone appears to be doing far better than you. Huh? First time your prayers will be like But as you pray alone, you'll find that once you are praying for someone, it's easy to love them. Amen. Yeah. If you don't pray for someone, you will hurt them. If you see someone who's a threat to you or to your business, pray for them. Pray that they do well and God will shift your position too. Amen. Hey. And you find all rubbish stories to put them down. And honor has stages. Once you get to that stage, which I call stage seven, you're gone. You're gone. You're gone very quickly. Bitterness. People kill each other in Africa. They poison each other. It all comes from lack of appreciating what someone is doing and honoring them. What's a lawyer? Please, Each time someone does better, this is the principle I love. I live by that. I go to them and say, you know what? You're doing this far better than me. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for accomplishing this. Thank you. In our city, I had two pastors. Two pastors. Two, two, only two that phoned me and said, Bishop. The structure that you are building in this is justifying and sanitizing all of us pastors. Because many people say, pastors, but the man is a man. But you build that, you are silencing everybody. There's two, two, two pastors. I'm still waiting for others. 
I'm still waiting. Two. I'm talking of two outside my churches. Two. Mm. I pray that when someone has done well, yeah, because it's not every day that you build a 10,500 sitter. Is it an everyday thing? When it's look, then cook, it cook is always not a pan. I was a waste of his It's not an everyday thing. Okay, I left that. I went on to talk of results of dishonor. When you dishonor, you open again your life to certain demonic entities that will come into your life and invade your life. Once you start to dishonor others, you know something will happen. Someone along the line will dishonor you. It could be your children. Yeah, they will never listen to you. Some of your parents are struggling with your children now because you dishonored somebody. You dishonored a parent somewhere. Ah, I once told one of my leaders, I said, if I hear you say this nonsense again, I will say, because they were saying, oh, yeah, I didn't know that I was pronouncing judgment on this man, on this woman. I say, I'm a dead man, referring to one of my parents. I said, what? What? Do you think we have influence over our children above a certain age? Even though you have done your very best, is a struggler. Pray for me to this. Pray for me to come I say to that woman, you are a silly woman. And I say those words, her daughter in the same year had twins outside marriage. I never went to her to say, ah, we are to each other. I can't say that. But I'm sure she understands the lesson. Never criticize. university. Spend time praying for them. So that your kids as well will excel. But when I'm over back, I'm going to go to the university. 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 I'm going to go Please look at your neighbor and say, Ukuruma, the own fun is you and zero to my loy. Then I touched on move away from those that have dishonor. If you're in a company full of people that dishonor, I even went higher here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a politician. I don't belong to any political party. I vote as I see who's doing better or who's likely to. So I don't belong. And as a pastor, I, sh I can't tell you which party to belong to. It's wrong because we are all from different points. But here is it. Don't dishonor your president, even though you don't belong to his party. Don't do that. Because once you get used to that, you get used to dishonoring all forms of authority. Okay. You may not like what he's doing. You may not like the way he's leading the country. But don't utter words as a Christian that belittle him and insult him. Don't do that. Never be found in that company. Am I saying belong to this party? No. <laughs> Understand me. Because authority figures are allowed, not put, but allowed by God. Eh? So at least you find yourself kicking against the bricks. Okay. Never dishonor someone of authority. It will backfire on you. Okay, I went on then to talk about how to honor someone with your substance. I caused some of our pastors and leaders to stand up here. And I'm glad that some of you are listening to this message. I got quite a number that came to me and said, Bishop, ever since you preached that message, I was blessed so and so, came in so and so. Another one came, said, come to my shop and come and pick. And somebody went and picked in their shop. I'm glad for you. I'm very happy for you that someone listened to the message and called some of you to come to their shops and come and pick. Because it's a sign of saying, I honor you, my pastor. I'm glad it didn't come to me. I'm a paid receiver. It came to some of you here. Yeah. Okay. Which is very good. And you are showing a sign of honor. You cannot receive from someone that you don't honor. Let's deal with honoring with ease quickly. Honoring with ease. Do not allow the concept of honor to mess you up and derail you from doing 
what is right. Do not equate honor with worshiping someone. No. Honor and worshiping someone are two different things. Don't bow down to a pastor in the sense of, oh, lie down and so don't do that. Any pastor who allows that does not know God. Because only God is supposed to be bowed down to. We don't worship leaders. We don't praise leaders in an abnormal way. We don't do that. But honoring a leader is very, very important. So don't allow therefore the concept of honoring to be a problem for you anymore. You are not a rebel. You will find that many people that employ, that manifest dishonor in their lives are rebels. Because rebellion is far away from you. It's very close to you. Rebellion is very close to someone who can't honor. Because you're saying, who is there anyway for me to congratulate them? I don't care about what they're doing. Rebellion sets in. And when you're a rebel, the end of all rebels, according to the Bible, is death prematurely. Never be a rebel. You are not a disloyal person. Disloyal people can't honor anyone. Everything must be centered around them. If it's not them, it's no one else. And therefore, it's always to do with them. Teach yourself, please, to appreciate and honor someone who is doing far better than you. It is your gateway to the next level. Amen. Just by honoring. I know some of you have neighbors that are doing better. Yeah? Doing better. Cross her over. We are going to Mama, Lo Baba. We are going to chat to the Nyibo na yola pan. We are in Chabuli You are opening a door for your children too. Say Amen. amen. You are not a dishonorable person. Okay. Therefore, you walk in the light of God and the revelation of God. Can I give you therefore the six points here quickly so that we go home? Here is point number one. Honor with love and faith. Honor with love and faith. You notice honor is always undergirded by love. The railway slippers, the railway lines for honor is love. You may start not loving that person, but once you honor someone, you find that it's very difficult to hate them when you honor them. These two are incompatible. It can be love, it can be lack of love and honor. It can't, it can't work. Once you love someone, you find that it's very easy to honor them. That's why the Bible says, husbands, love your wives. So once you love your wife, you find that you can honor her. Mm. But it says, wives, honor your husbands. Mm. You notice that wives are not commanded to love, but just to honor. Because men go far with honor. Mm. But it is a man that's supposed to love. And women therefore respond to that love and therefore give you honor. Mm. Say amen. amen. Yeah. So some people therefore struggle with this concept of honoring another human being. Why should I honor? I only honor God. You are mistaken, my friend. It is the same God in his way that he says honor people. Yeah, he's the same God. We read the scripture there in Romans. You must begin to honor different levels of authority in your life. And honor is usually upward and never horizontal, but vertical. Somebody above you. Somebody that you are supposed to be striving with. The Bible says honor that particular person. And when you do things change. And it has nothing to do with age. You may be a great achiever, younger than me. I look at the achievement. I look at the grace. I must honor that. Say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. So honor becomes key, ladies and gentlemen. If you and I get to understand it, we are going far. There are two young ladies called Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha loved Jesus very clear. It is out of love that caused them to honor Jesus Christ. They honored them, they honored Jesus above the disciples of Christ. 
That's why they are mentioned today more in the Bible. That we will remember them. We still remember them. Because each time Jesus passed by, they entertained him. They asked him to stay. They cooked a meal for him. So he loved Martha. He loved Mary. He loved their brother Lazarus. He ended up loving the whole family. Jesus could go into Martha and Mary's house and relax. You don't relax in a home where you are not honored. You are finished if you relax. But in a home where you are honored, you can go there and relax. If you see me visiting your home, saying, that means I feel at home in that place. But there are homes that you visit, you are on guard. You are on guard even the questions they are asking you. You are on guard. So you spend the whole one hour watching missiles. Which one? <laughs> Which one is coming? Which one is a trap? Which one is going to trap me here? You are worried. But there are homes where you visit and you let your hair down. Even me without hair, I let it down. Mm, because you are at home. Mm. So honor therefore is enhanced by love. In a place, in a relationship where there is love, you will find that you honor with ease. Say amen. You honor with ease. And therefore it's important for a man to love his wife so that she will honor with ease. Yeah. You can't beat your wife and kick your wife and tell them, oh, you don't honor me. It can't work. They only respond to love. Honor, love. Love is powerful. Practice it in your life. Love your fellow man. Love your fellow brother. Love, love, love works. And Mary and Martha loved Jesus. And Jesus would come. That's why he wept at Lazarus' tomb. The shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. John 11, 35. He wept. Why? He truly loved this family. When he saw the siblings crying over their brother and saying, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. That's how they loved Jesus. They didn't condemn him. They didn't say, where were you? Where were you? We are angry with you. We are very mad with you. We, we, our brother fell sick. We sent a message. You never came. He died. You never came to the funeral. And then now, he is buried and dead and you are coming. They didn't say that. They pleaded. They didn't say only if you were here. We know this one thing. This man would have not died. And he kept on telling them, I am the resurrection. And that's why he was compelled. Wherever you are in an environment of love, honor kicks in. And when honor kicks in, the anointing begins to flow. Every man of God will tell you, if you are preaching to people that don't honor you, there is no flow. We read from the scriptures over the past weeks, Jesus could not do mighty works there because of their unbelief, dishonor. Mm -hmm. So he left and said, goodbye, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Even you and I, as we witness in the streets, there are some people, we went to a home yesterday because, uh, <laughs> well, I suppose the man is here, well, he is free to talk about it, I suppose. Mm. We went to a home after doing our errands, our ministry, me, Sheps, Nanji, and moving and moving. And then we said, let's pass through the city. We passed through the home and said, let's go back. Because somebody told me there is a, a yoga there in that home. So I wanted to see the yoga. I was in a, in a, in a spirit of seeing the snake and, and dealing with the snake spirit yesterday. I felt good about it. So I said, let's go. So we drove, packed, and so forth. We found the daughter. They said, move over, across, come in. And we went in. I found a man there. This man, the moment I came in, he said, Baba, what? He was drunk, of course. Oh, Baba, what? And he jumped on me. And he kissed me. Very few men kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> and he kissed me. And he kissed my hand. And he knelt before me. I stood him up. I said, don't kneel. And he came in and said, yeah, my father, do you actually visit me here? You are visiting me here. Me, I love that. Yeah. Mm. So his faith was high that I could speak anything, it will happen. Amen. So he was honoring me in his own way as I came into his home, kissing me, kissing my hand, kissing my cheek, kissing my forehead. <laughs> I felt like, do it, ma. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I 
I'm not a homo. <laughs> but he was, that was his way of honoring. Did he give me a cup of tea? No. Did he give me water? No. Did he offer me anything? No. But I felt at home in that place. And the person, one of the people that we were going with, I won't tell you which one said, for me, I'm offended when a, when a drunk person. I said, no. Me, I remember where I come from. Uh -huh. And therefore, I am moved by such a thing. So one of my disciples I was moving with was offended. Uh, <laughs> whether they were, you know, you know, uh, uh, po po pointed uh, among those two. Uh, so very offended. But I understand their position. I think you're saying, Bishop, why do you, why do you, waste, why do you allow this person to do this? But for me, I understood it. I was once a sinner. Uh, I was heading for that. So I began to tell, tell that person, this is me. I was down that road. So when I find someone down that road, especially in Sivigazi where I grew up in, oh, it conjures up memories. I could be the same there. I could be the same. And he knelt down. He would keep on kneeling down. I was standing up and coming down. So then I said, show us the snake. <laughs> Is there a snake here? <laughs> no, there was no snake. I'm correcting somebody who thought there was a snake. There is no snake there. But there were bones. It's another topic for another day. Don't ask me what bones. There are bones anyway. Mm. Yeah. But we prayed for the man. Why did we pray for the man? We felt happy. We felt the man welcomed us in his home. Drunk. We didn't put an appointment. We didn't do anything. We just barged in. And when he saw us, the even as we were leaving now his home, he was announcing to people, leave, these are the pastors indeed. Like, like the Apostle Paul. Yeah. These are the genuine pastors. And these are my pastors. He's shouting to his neighbors and we're moving. And I felt, my God, I have never been honored even by the ship that I preached to Sunday in, Sunday out. And there is a drunkard telling everybody, this man is a man of God. I felt the anointing coming upon. I could have turned them preach to that crowd. Why out of honor? Why I felt loved? I could have sat with that man the whole day. I'm a busy man. But just for that man, I could have sat with him. And just say, say anything that you want to say. And for me, when I feel honored, like my wallet is not far away from me. I feel like opening my wallet. But before we came in, there is a lady who had directed us. The lady saw us parking there. And we tried to knock front door. It was locked, I'm told. They lost the key. This elderly lady, she's around about 80, but strong lady. She just looked at us and said, no, no, no. Go this way. Go pass through another yard and go there. And use the back. So we said, oh, she saw that we were bizarre and we didn't know, are we allowed to pass through someone's yard? She came in and said, follow me. So we followed her and said, this is the way. You know, to evangelize under the anointing is, is an amazing thing. I'll divert here just now. So we go in there and my heart is saying, give this lady something. I just, oh no, let me, let me wait, let me talk to that. But when she had gone, I felt it in my spirit. You know what? I should have blessed that woman with money. So she's gone. When we were leaving now, this woman we were driving, we went through Panya, Panya route, some, some koto somewhere, and there we see that woman coming in, and the Spirit of God said, don't miss it this time. Stop and open your wallet. I blessed her and said, Mom, just for taking me right round, I want to bless you. She had honored me, she doesn't know me. I was wearing jeans. Was I wearing jeans? Yeah, I was wearing jeans. And she honored me. And the Spirit of God said, bless her. Bless this woman. I said, no, later, after I've seen this one, and gone. As we are passing through, Emma chips in the pan, I saw her. Ngubenja, Emma chips in. What people can do for one. You can imagine, if you honor your enemies, what they can do for you. So many of you have many enemies, because you don't honor them. You talk ill of them. Ah, that's Tacha. That's African language. If someone is doing well, that's Tacha. And everybody must be pulled down. Hey, husbands and wives connive and talk about other couples. Hey, Bastacha, Batanya, Bamatila, Otorio Lava, I'm sure Balabatu Pansi, Balamakanta Pansi Abantu, and so forth. Instead of going and celebrating this man and saying your achievements are convicting us, teach us. How are you doing it? Teach us. Teachers, this man is a preacher. Mm. Hey. 
Là, il y a ma presse, ils sont voisins de l'autre. Don't confuse the press. Bro. The wife is there. Oh, it's somewhere there. He's a preacher. Are you not a preacher? Hey, powerful preacher. Celebrate him when he finishes preaching. Go to him and say, you preach well. Oh, yeah, no lie. Hey, yeah, thank you. Hey, but tell us, he's a special good one. Mm. So out of love, love will cause you to honor people. You can't honor anything that you don't love. It's impossible. <laughs> and God is love. You understand that? And he says his love is shed abroad in our hearts through or by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, God is love. Once you love, once you ask God to love your enemies, you will end up honoring them. Amen. Yeah. I told you about the testimony of a preacher who saw me when my church was small, many years ago, very small. I greeted him by name, he didn't answer me. He told me, verbal, no, no, by eyes, that your church is too small for me to greet you. Yeah. I said, I can't. I said, how will you say? He just looked aside. In a bank called Parkley's Bank. There was a Parkley's Bank by Fire Street, by the corner. He never, he never answered back. I said, what kind of a human being is this? That I'm a pastor. He didn't consider me a pastor. He didn't know that I was a small pastor, but I wasn't going to remain small. Job 8, verse 7. Though your beginning was small, and yet your later end shall be great. Mm, he didn't know that. So years later, because fools forget. Fools always forget. He comes to my office for prayer. He said, man, I want the anointing that you have, men of God. He has forgotten that I, I greeted him. And he didn't answer. And he kneels down. He's wearing a suit. He says, lay hands. I want what you have. I couldn't have reminded him. I felt it's not time to remind him. I could have said, where now? When how much when? I never say that. <laughs> Even though my flesh felt like saying it. I then laid my hands on that man and said, Man of God, may God lift you up. May God empower you. May God change your destiny. May God open doors for you. And may God's grace be strong upon you. You can only honor something that you love. Some of you start loving your competitors or those people that are a threat to you. Start loving them. You'll be surprised. It will open a door for honor. And when you honor them, guess what? It will open a door for your elevation. You are stagnant now because you are competing. It takes a lot to hold strife in your heart. Ah, it takes a lot of energy because you are angry. Even if you see somebody and they come in here and you dislike them, oh, you stop. Even if you hear that they have done well some way, you are angry because you don't want to love and therefore honor. Say amen. amen. Lift up your hands and say, teach me to honor. Me say it again, say, teach me to honor. Me to honor. So when you love someone, it becomes easy to honor them. <laughs> a certain rich man, still on point number one, was loved, he had children. But the person who really, really loved this sick, rich old man was the maid. The maid owned this person, took care of him when he was sickly and so forth, nursed him and so forth, until that man changed his will without the children knowing. He called his lawyer and says, change my will. Yeah. He changed his will. He empowered the maid when he was dying. May this person who looked after me when I was dying be empowered. He gave millions to this. And to sons and daughters, he just gave small amounts into thousands, thousands, thousands. That woman got it. Because the woman had honor over that man. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? There are things that happen with people that will always change your life completely. And therefore, it's very important to honor. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, teach me to honor. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I said a rich man died. But before he died, he left a worker some millions of dollars. And he left his wife a Bible. Hmm. Yeah. He left his wife a Bible. He said, so that you read it and, 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 and understand that you must honor. 
and he left workers, lots of money. Uh, you may look at it and say, what a cruel man. You don't know what was happening. I uh, look at you and everybody say, you don't know what was happening. What What Read about white, white men when they're dying, rich men. You'll be surprised. Another one left money with the cat. And he said, these researchers must study any diseases of cats, cats diseases. And he left millions of dollars and nothing to those that were, they didn't care. Many people when you are sick, they don't care about you. That's where you see it for colors, isn't it? When you're going through a bind, they run away from you. Umango is a salary man who gets away. Point number two. Point number two. Honor with acceptance and admiration. You can't honor something that you don't accept. Can I say that again? You can't honor something that you don't accept, that you don't admire. That's why to admire is very important, within reason. Don't go overboard with admiring people. I'm talking about within reason. Admire people. I'm talking of normal admiration here. Admire people. When you admire someone, you feel like what they are doing is good and you want to be like them or in the same line like they are. And therefore, admiration is very good. Mary and Martha accepted and admired Jesus Christ. Truly, truly. That's why Mary came with the alabaster box full of expensive perfume and released the contents of the perfume on Jesus. But those that didn't admire Jesus, though they moved with him, they called it a waste. Have you read that scripture? They said, why waste? Why waste this? It could have been sold and the resources given to the poor. But these show that this man called Jesus was worth the ointment, was worth the admiration. And they accepted Jesus. But his own disciples, who later some of them became apostles, when they saw that they rebuked this woman, what are you doing? And Jesus said, let her alone, leave her alone. Can you see, when you can't admire and accept, you can't honor. So you have to change your mindset. Anything that you don't admire, it's very difficult to honor. Anything that you admire, easy to honor. Easy to honor. Easy to honor. Have you found that your favorite preachers? And if you admire those preachers, you can listen to them. And really your judgment towards what they say is limited. I say many things here that are scary over the pulpit. Why do you do I get away with it? You still come the following week and I say it at times when I go home, I say, did I actually say that? Oh my God, oh my God. It is because there is some sort of acceptance. Yeah, we accept this man. So when you accept someone, you don't judge them quickly. When you don't accept someone, any small thing they say, you condemn them. I was such a general bishop, sure. I'm a bishop, but I'm very village. I was taught on pornography here for, for, for two months on pornography. I don't know if a pastor that can teach on porn, like I teach on porn. Mm, porn. Hardcore porn. I was teaching on it. But you kept on coming. For different reasons, of course. But, <laughs> but you were coming. <laughs> Because when you accept someone, it's very easy to tolerate. And it's very easy to honor. Mm -hmm. Once you don't accept someone, any mistake they make, you're judging them. Yeah. Oh, I'm for this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're judging them because you don't accept them. Equally so when you accept your spouse. Well, I'm for this. Hey, let me put that. You will find that it's easy for you to tolerate. In marriage, marriage is not easy. Marriage is give and take. Marriage at times you look and say, I mean, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but because there is admiration, there is acceptance, you tolerate. 
Mina nina ngena kusini yako kwenye hapa mbu ye. Ngibi yi third person. Ngibuone leo intuwe zinyu mama zienza yo. Hai vele nya kulu mamini. Ngibi ya mamina yo. But we know ule love. Special love for her. Eh. Angaza peki mbozwe yi. Ngibi ninja. Eh. Because of love. Ha 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 ha. Ba peki mboza pelo mama la vante. Uye sabu kulu mama la pa. Ha 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 ha. So Mary and Martha accepted. Say amen. And that's why they found it easy to honor. Number three, honor with conviction. Not half measures. Honor with conviction. Mary had a conviction that other bystanders did not have. She believed this is the Son of God. And therefore, before burial, I must pour the contents. Let me play around with this for a while. Many people have goodly words when someone is passed on. Hey, Abantu, unga landela ma funerals, Abantu wamnyam. Ha! Lezi kevenga ziya kuruma, ube ngumuto muse, sibili, yeah. Why not do it while that person is alive? Mary was trying to show us, if you are to do something good, something expensive, do it to the living more than the dead. Katisu mamu ya suwe limpati. But Gagati Poopers, more Kalisang is little. So she had tea coffee in Utingela Utaban to the Makelon, Babon Utilian a casket. Ah, never to do with honor for this person. This person lived, you didn't care about them. You didn't care. When they die, you then find it within your heart to remember all the good things. Why not remember them now? Why not remember them and sit down with them and say, Mom, my mother used to cook. My, my kids used to love my mother's cooking, their grandmother, my mother's cooking. She could cook chomolia in a certain way. La matambo, le nyama, le brisket, la Ah! Certain way. Tell the woman while she's alive. Don't talk about her when she's dead and you never told her things. Go to her and say, we are Moses. Ngayin chumayro zami ziku Moses ngi chela. Unga mele li se nkula la pano zi mwere. Hey, but in chumayro zami ziku shua hai. Hamba kachan. While I live. If your neighbor blesses you, tell them. If your husband blesses you, tell him. If your husband blesses you, tell him while he lives. If the brigadier who's coming in July blesses you, tell him. I hope he's watching this. Tell him. Tell him, Brigadji, we are Mbusi, Sarako. Tell him. Mama Vira, this man, tell him. I wonder whether you tell him that he's smart. Do you tell him that he's smart? Yeah. You did, you did, today. Oh, did, did she? Is she telling the truth? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the husband says, I can't remember. <laughs> I know she did, isn't it? <laughs> hey, do you tell him? Over in the choir, he blessing me. We be good to see some riches at your choir. He blessing God. We am chelo. We am born to chai vala. We am born to chai lapat. We am born to chai. We born to mama lo yaktan. Na kul. Hani umi lo no phone la mo phone a a me kumbri story zena skuma phone a a. Lutando le lunga bumbu kufuna mofu am ukuluma la e kuchitu mtan fu am hish we bumbela na mofu am iko he kuchitu story simkaza uguti baba kudoso ha manasi chini kati vi la le baba ngo we amje lo mama lo kaku we amje lo mama baba lo. Honor with conviction. Mary had conviction, and bystanders didn't have that conviction. When you are convicted in your heart that this person must be honored, no one should stop you. Honor them. Break the bank to honor them. I don't say rob. I'm simply saying go out of town to honor them. Yes. Yeah, honor them with all your might. And you'll be seeing one of the key catalysts of God's blessings is honor. 
you employ honor in your life, even that person who are, whom you are honoring is beginning to think, what can I do for this person? Uh, what can I do? For so many of you, you dishonor people that have power to change your life. Uh, you're busy fighting them. Uh, yet just honor. Say, I honor you. Oh, ma'am, I honor you. You never know you have planted a seed in that person's life. I'm not saying corn people. I'm saying honor people. Mm. Yeah. When you honor people, you go far. Can I give you number four? Number four. Honor according to rank. <laughs> Here is another way. You don't honor everybody with the same honor. What a ranking. I have a message called ranking. Ranking in the kingdom. Ranking in life. People belong to different ranks. Are you understanding? I have pastors under me. I have senior pastors under me. I have reverence under me. I have senior reverence under me. Yeah. So the honor that you give to my pastor should be a different honor that you give to me. Okay. Should I? Yes. Yeah. So it will be different. Equally, so let me use somebody else. The way you honor someone of a certain rank should be different from someone of a higher rank. Okay. Hey, don't give honor the same person. is higher than that one. They won't appreciate your honor. Hey, they won't appreciate you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Hey. Yeah. And don't honor people that are not supposed to be honored. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. when, when the Bible says honor your husband, the way you honor your husband must be different from the way you honor other men. Don't honor your husband with the same honor that you give to other men. No. So when you honor, you honor. In fact, he deserves much honor from you, ladies that are here. That man. But many women honor pastors more than they honor their husbands. I miss. Wrong. Unga figo na mfundi zba kipi cha inali ana ba kipi ba um talalo ana kaza ba piko u nate ngomu chia ezim e a cheesy kango um fundi zanga figa ay 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 so kicho. But that man, honor that man. When you serve him, maybe you leave the two of you serve him well. Whatever service you are giving to him. <laughs> Sex is a service. Are you married? Who, where is your wife? Are you married? Where is your husband? Your wife is in South Africa. Who's oh, Okay. So you just decided to come here and live here. And your husband? You are visiting. You left him. Okay, so he lives in Harare. Wait, he went for it. So he's coming. So the way, the way, the way you honor him should be different from the way you honor other men. Yeah, he's a special kind of a man. You live with him. He found you and he chose you. And he thinks you are special. I hope he thinks so. Yeah. yeah. So he must be honored. Any man that can stay with one woman for 10 years, hey, that man must be honored. Hey, it is a double honor. Double honor. <laughs> because the temptation for men, a man, a Christian man, is the only man whom we all know that can live with one, one, one woman. It's not easy to live with one woman. Yeah, it's never easy. So all men that discipline themselves to live with one man should be honored. When I go to church, I to Many people think that when you are married now, that's the end. You have no more temptation. You are joking, my friend. You are playing. <laughs> yeah. So all men that cannot run away from their wives and stay with their wives, those men ought to be saluted by us men. Yeah, all the time. All by us men. 
you are blessed if your man is still with you. Because ask many ladies, men have left them. At a certain age, 40, 50, they leave them for 20 year olds. They leave them. Yeah. They think you have no spark now, they leave you. Or they think your tummy now is big, yet you are carrying their children and they leave you. Mm. And they leave you. And they find the younger ones. And when they find the young ones, they impregnate them, they leave them too and find more younger ones. A man can continue that cycle of finding the younger one until they're 100. Keep on. Boom. And going down. Boom. And going down. That's a man. Yeah, I don't need to talk to you, a man. You understand, isn't it? I'm talking to another man here. You understand. The pressure for a man, any man, the projections that any man gets from women are many. Even the most horrible man has projections from ladies. Because ladies are more than men. They are all looking for a man. Most of them. Especially in church circles. And they are straightforward women. They can't just pick anybody. And therefore they are limited to impact. <laughs> they are <laughs> Number four, we said honor according to rank. To flow in the grace of honoring people, you need to honor everyone according to their rank. Very important. Next, honor everyone according to, it is much easier to honor people according to who they really are in your life. In your life. Yeah. In your life. Okay. What you may honor, I may not honor. In the sense of, are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. I will look and say, ah, sure. But that person is something to you. And therefore, that's why you honor. But to put everybody in one pot and say, let's all honor that and honor, it can't happen. Because we're impacted differently as we live and progress in life. Correct? Yeah. The lecturers that made you get that degree that you have came to your life and taught you. They never taught me. I was taught by different lecturers. So you will honor your lecturers. I don't necessarily need to honor your lecturers. Mm. Is that not so? Yeah, I don't even know who they are. So if I meet them in the streets, I can't honor the you'll stop and say, Mr. So-and-so, thank you. Like, I was preaching in Gwanda, in our Gwanda church. I met my teacher who taught me form four. Yeah. Oh, and I'm preaching. And guess who comes forward for salvation? It's my teacher. Wow. Ah, I see him coming, I look at him. Oh, I nearly said, teacher, go back. I was calling others, not you. I don't think you need salvation. <laughs> but I led him to Christ. Wow. Mm. I felt highly honored that this man who could beat me up, yeah, bam, bam, is coming to listen to me and he's giving his life. Wow. I said, say, say these words. There were many then that say these words after me. I repeated the words after me. And I led him to Christ. Wow. Mm. I led to Christ a lady long back before I was married. I tried to propose to and she said, When now? When now? When now? When now? Who sends you When now? When now? I led her to Christ. <laughs> she realized that I'm no longer that when now? When She could own her now, isn't it? Yeah. You cannot honor someone above a person's rank. So ranking is key, ladies and gentlemen. Honor according to rank. First Samuel 2, 26 to 30. Let's read. And the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor, both with the Lord and man. Verse 27. Then a man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt and Pharaoh's house? Verse 28. Did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer up? my offerings and so forth. Verse 29. Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering, which I've commanded in my dwelling place, and honor your sons more than me? There is a priest, Eli. There is a priest of God. He honors his sons that were taking, I'm using a Greek word now, that were chachuring meat from the altar. God's offering will come in, they will take and eat. These boys were bad. Bad boys. And the father was honoring these above God until God cried for his meat, his offering. He says, what is happening here? 
Why are you allowing your sons? And then he released the most withering case in life. He released it to Eli and his family. Eli instantly took place. Eli died. His sons died. His daughter-in-law died. That was the case of failure to honor. So when you fail to honor, there is death that comes. It may not be natural death, but spiritual death, or things around you begin to fall apart because you lose it somewhere. Please look at your neighbor and say, honor, 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 honor. Mm. Verse 30, let's read verse 30. Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And when God says that, you're in trouble. Can I give you point five and then six and then we go? Maybe let me give you these two points standing up. Please stand if you don't mind. So that you get the idea that we're about to go and it will be easy for you. Point number five. Point number five. Honor with humility. Honor demands humility. Say amen. amen. Honor demands what? Humility. Honor demands what? Humility. humility. If you are a proud person, you will not be able to honor others. There are many people that are very proud. They find it difficult to honor others, especially if someone is younger than you and they've achieved more. You find it very difficult. Who are they? Please, honor requires humility. Without humility, you will not see the greatness of the person as you should. You will never see it. You will always think, oh, that young boy. That's why I hate leaders that always refer to young people. Oh, you young boy, you young boy. Never use that language. Never use that language. Call them by their name. I have been around leaders that we know, oh, yeah, this is a small boy for me. Hey, you, and you're hitting his head. Never do that. Tomorrow, you will need to honor that person. How then will you do it when you've been beating his head down? It is nothing to do with a result. I may be born later than you, but greatness comes upon me and wisdom comes upon me. And you better listen to that and you better honor that. It's to your advantage to honor. Young people today can teach you things that you don't know. Young people can teach you Facebook. <laughs> uh -huh. When I was in Facebook, I have daughters here that yeah, when I stuck somewhere, Joy, how, how to get that? Joy goes in, oh, easy, Papa, Papa. Oh, how does it go? Oh, easy, Papa. Mm. They know far better, far better than you do. I'm following behind. <laughs> that's why I have all these gadgets. Maybe that's why I have many. I have three, one, two, and three. I'm trying to catch up. Mm. Yeah. Always make sure that you are careful as not to belittle someone because of their age. Hey, when I'm fat, when I'm fat, never use that language. I have a son, a son will grow. We have sons as preachers. We don't have a father as preachers. We don't have a man to son. We have sons and daughters. Amen. Why do we use sons and daughters potentially? That's a leader. A leader that can be greater than you because they are standing on your shoulders. Amen. Yeah. Tomorrow, when you've been saying, um, fine, look, um, fine, look, when they are great, what do you say? You will struggle to appreciate. I have leaders that struggle to appreciate the success of their sons because they know humility. Humility is very important in life. Never think you are the only one. There are others that God is yet to reveal. They will shock you. It will shock you. Say amen. amen. So honor is upward. Anointing does not flow horizontally. Mm -mm. If you are to get the benefits of honor, honor upward. Then before the anointing comes in. Always when you honor vertically, you are in the right direction. Amen. Not horizontally, but in a vertical manner. The anointing will flow. That's why people that have more grace than you are the ones that pray for you. And when they pray for you, something is effected in your life. Uh -huh. 
if you ask someone to pray for you who is of a lower rank for a change, they can pray for you if you are sick, no problem. But for a change in your status in God, it can't happen. Yeah, you need someone of a higher rank to pray for you. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yeah. Someone of a higher rank. One false prophet saw me somewhere. He's a well-known false prophet. So, uh, so when he saw me, he knelt down and he said, Bishop, pray for me. I said, no, you're a prophet. I'm a prophet too. Oh, I'm a bishop, apostle. You, you, so why should I pray for you? You pray for yourself. Uh, why, why do you need me to pray for you? He, here's what he says. He says, your rank is higher than mine. Yeah. When he said that, I prayed for him. Yeah. He said the right thing. I didn't want to pray for him. He's a false prophet. I didn't want to pray for him. But he says, your rank is higher than me. And therefore, I recognize that. Another one saw me in, at the airport at uh, Oliver Tambo. At the airport with his wife. He's sitting. He's a pompous guy. He goes with legs. He kept kneeling at the airport. Kneeling on his knees. Everybody watching at the airport. You know airports are busy. For people to kneel down to you. Yeah. I said, Why, what are you doing? He says, my father. He says, I'm his father. I'm not his father. He says, my father. Mm. <laughs> he says, my father, pray for me. Pray for me. I said, why the drama? Why don't you call me when I'm in the city? Why the drama here? He says, you're a man of God. Why pray for me at the airport? I looked. I wanted to, to disappear. Mm. But he was doing something that's right. He saw me, he wanted what he wanted at the airport. He could wait. Another one in the plane, we're flying. And we're sitting down. Aeroplane circles down. Seat belts off. We're flying, I'm thinking, yeah, let me close my eyes eh, and think of where I'm going to preach. Mm, he taps me. He talks me. Are you bishop yet? I said, yes. He says, wait. As if I was going anyway, he says, wait. <laughs> In the place, says, wait, wait, wait. And then, boom, he opens his, his locker. Boom, he brings a bag. Lots of money. You know some people. Lots of money. He buys it on to me. Oh, and the old people just are seeing me receiving. And I took the money. No! <laughs> and I took it. Never, never play around with money when someone is giving. I took it in the air. I wish he had more because he emptied the whole bag. Oh, I took the money. He says, you're a great man. He says that to me. I said, really? <laughs> he says, yeah. He says, why? I says, you know, no, no, a great man. So I received the man. I flew. I've never seen him again. I wish I could see him again. <laughs> In the air. With a, With a big bag this time. <laughs> so honor is amazing. But honor according to rank. Don't think that man you will meet him, he will give you the money. No, he will not give you. He may ask more money from you. But rank causes it easy to honor. Very easy. Because then when you are honoring upward, then the blessings flow. Say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. Number six. Honor before it's too late. Mm. Honor before it's what? Too late. Mm -hmm. Don't say tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come. Yeah. Honor before it's too late. Honor. Honor. I say to you with balance, within reason. Don't, if you're in my church, honor guest speakers more than you honor me. We are tired. Winter, summer, spring, autumn, guest speaker once. If you see me, you can speak, oh yeah, he, he preaches, I preach. There is no one who preaches better than me in my church. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. 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 But I will have to say that from January to December, I look at me like a palao. 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 I look at
<laughs> when I'm standing here, do you know what it is to preach at times when you don't feel like preaching? Do you know to preach at times when your time is rumbling? Do you know when to preach at times with a headache? Hmm? To stand one hour and preaching? Do you know at times to preach when you have no money in your pocket? No money, nothing. When you don't feel like it, when you don't even feel like meeting people and you are standing, God bless you. God watch over you. Do you know how it is? Hey God, he said, he's a man of God. When? When? Who is look for you must understand these things. A guest speaker is good. I invite many guest speakers. Great men of God and women of God. But I'm here. January, February, March, April, May. Just six months. And I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been here standing. I want to stand Be balanced. I need you. Hey, we forget it, no country. So don't let it. Honor, rather, before it's too late. Mary honored Jesus Christ in time. That's why we're talking of Mary today. Before he was crucified, this perceptive lady was there. She saw something that the disciples, even Peter, could not see. Later on, Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot, very well laid. Yeah? Peter could not see this. But this woman came in. Mm. Please, this can apply to your loved ones. Some people need in your family to hear you speak. Tell them of how you've, they've helped you. Tell your parents how they've assisted you. They've helped you, isn't it? You think money falls from trees, from parents. Parents work hard. Kobo needs to hear this. You're a single mother, isn't it? Yes. It's not easy to be a single mother. Kids relax. They just demand from parents. Hey, I'm going to school fish. Hey, I'm going to Hey, I'm going to school fish. I was very appreciative. I'm in your platform, by the way, silently. Silently, you musicians. I saw the appreciation that you said, all of you. I saw that. I was moved. Because it's not my right to take any impact on me. And I have a lot of friends who take any impact on It's. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a must that I buy you four changes of clothing and shoes. And so. it's not, it's not, it's not, it doesn't come by right. But your response there was divine. All of you. I was going through them. Hey, I was going through them. I was going through them. I was going through them. I saw all of you. I response. Put it. I will be reading it. Say thank you there. Mm. Hey, yes. Say thank you. Yes. Because who buy you clothes? Because you are who? Yes. Because you happen to sing here like a dove? Yes. And cuckoo? Who, 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 who? Yes. Who, who must buy you clothes? Yes. Is it your right? Oh, it's my right because I am under bishop at HQ. Therefore, it's my right that because I sing in the choir and this man I must buy. No, yes. it's not your right. I paid people lots of money to come and teach you to sing. Mm -hmm. So the least that you can do is thank you. Thank you. If you haven't done that, you'll have to I will test you. Mm -hmm. So get a lapa of fagel over a pan. Hey, I can say, I can only get in your bong when I see so much money. We would do pussy. I'm teaching. I'm teaching the generation to be thankful, to be grateful. If someone gives you something, say thank you. No mean to say thank you. 
It's not your right that someone gives you anything. It's not your right. <laughs> because I happen to pastor you, should I, is it your right that I give you something? Uh-huh. It's not your right. Go to other churches and find who to go to bishop. You know, my brain is Many pastors are self centered. It's me, 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 me. We are going to look. We are going to look. So that tomorrow you are a great person. Se me gubo na papa ntana tsebe sa kitchen. Eh ngolora, isteli no kusuk to in there sign on. E autograph yakho, automation yakho, to automation. Automation, autograph. Suba sign is allowed. Honor begins with the word thank you. Say thank you. Turn around to anybody say thank you. Say it again say thank you. Even the smallest thing, say thank you. Thank you. Say thank you to your neighbor. Say it again, say thank you. Yeah. That person who's sitting next to you, they, they enjoyed you, say thank you. They enjoyed your armpit, say thank you. They enjoyed your couple of you, say thank you. Say thank you. Say thank you. Saying you have a good couple of quality, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are we going home now? Say, if you want to go home, how? Say, if you want Oh, catch us. How? Oh, heaven. Oh, say, say, I'm pushing you to my own Right. Deuteronomy 1 verse 11 as we go home. 1, 2, and 3 may. 